uh, all you need to know, uh, because these poems are still a mystery to me, um, is that it's from this book, Rocket Fantastic, and there are three people speaking in the book. It's, it's a story, kind of, um, or it's something. There are three people speaking. There's a, a, a young girl, she's about nine years old, and she is writing uh, letters to, Cap to Jim Lovell, the astronaut. It's 1968. Um, and uh, there, there is, uh, she has a brother named David who is in Vietnam, and uh, then they have a sister named Babe who uh, was living at home, but now she's gone to live in the Hollywood Hills with her friend Jasper Taylor. Um, she has fallen in love with a band leader, or she's fallen in something with a band leader, uh, who has a band called Rocket Fantastic, although whether or not there is a band um, is a real question that Jasper and she and I have together. And I'm just going to read Rocket Fantastic from Rocket Fantastic. I'm sorry, the light is... One day a girl wakes up so tired of Pasadena that each white house makes her cry as she try, drives herself to school. Her father says, buck up, or here, go buy yourself something nice. But really, how many dresses can one girl have? And anyway, there's a war outside somewhere to think of. One day a girl wakes up and the green of the trees seems like some story she's been told over and over, the boy with his buzz cut sneaking his hand up her shirt, then missing the point entirely once he gets there. Oh, the boredom of the beautiful men you're meant to marry. Sam and Michael, Bob Jr. with his perfect white shirt and pressed chinos, who looked so surprised when you caught him in the pool house with Jasper kneeling before him. One day a girl wakes up and there's a war outside and thirty dollars in her pocket and Jasper calls on the powder blue phone and talks to her mother. But Jasper is such a nice boy. He says he'll meet her out front in the Alfa Romeo, Pasadena. It's a place a girl can't go back to or won't, at least not if Jasper is driving the car. Jasper left to get ice cubes from the Italian designer three houses down because he said ours didn't have enough integrity. I was lying there listening to the doors, who I didn't really understand, and the girl put her clothes on and went looking for the band, who may have been just one person who did something with car radios and timpanies. I was lying there with my hand in the water and then you showed up in that dress of yours with a bag of blood oranges in your hand. And I shaded my eyes and asked what time it was because really I didn't know. And you said, ask the lizard king. And now I think it's funny that I didn't get the reference. It's not all bad. I mean, we laugh out there. Usually at Tommy who lets us laugh and makes us laugh at him. He's got this face like something in a book with little mountains on it and one of his eyes kind of sticks out and he makes it sticks out and he does the craziest things. He'll sort of prance around and wiggle his hips like a girl and when some guys are sleeping after getting drunk he'll wander up to them and lean down and blow a little in their ear. You'll hear them start to grin a little in their sleep like sigh a bit and he'll put his fingers in their hair or he'll get a girl to come and do it if we're somewhere in town and she'll ask him what she should do and he'll start saying all these things and we're just sitting there cracking up and sometimes feeling shocked at the things that he comes up with but it's true we all want those things it's nice and sometimes we'll just be sitting there so bored and Tommy will come back having found some cards or some radio turns up he's good with wires and things and can make anything broken can start up again. The first day I got here, he said, you need anything fixed, you just call. And then he winked and said, and I can break, I can break most anything you want broken too. He can. He can break things like you wouldn't believe, which sometimes you need. And he seems to be always there knowing when and what you want to ask. Captain Lovell, my eyes are shaky and glimmer like the stars. My head turns to the left and it moves just like a pendulum. The kids laugh and shake it back to me all the ways I'm stupid, not like them. But I know how the grass sounds when the locusts come, like a spaceship taking off and how it makes the air shake. Captain Lovell, I heard it in the branches and the leaves. I heard the rocket leaving. 
My teacher said it wasn't so, that you're past hearing, but my father said I could. He puts his hands hard on my shoulders from behind and holds my head still with his looking. But I can feel how much I want to shake and let myself go loose and double, like a cloud of mayflies on the lake. You know just how they rise so you couldn't see one of them, not even with your thumb held up to catch one with your eyes. It's something I can't do that Babe and David can. Can't sight the stars or use a telescope or even fire a gun. Dr. Lovell, I like to think you're spinning and can't feel it like I can't feel the world shake unless I'm really tired. And then it's like a gift to let it go and stop trying so hard. I like to think you let go too, and when the kids run at me and move their heads from left to right and call me zigzag, I look up and wish myself up there with you, just calm and swinging through the stars. <laughs>